This is Greg Troutwine with Offshore Engineer TV, and we're joined again today by Philip Lewis, the Director of Research for World Energy Reports, the author of The Outlook for Offshore Wind, Power, the Frontier of Future Energy. Phil, again, welcome to OETV. Thanks, Greg. Good to be back. Okay, so Phil, just to start, we're beginning to see ever larger turbines being developed for the offshore wind industry. How does this increase in size impact the industry as a whole from your perspective? Okay, thanks, Greg. Um, in our previous OE TV chats, uh, we touched on the trends of the globalization or, or the globalizing offshore wind industry, driving more and larger uh, wind farms with large turbines. At World Energy Reports, we're focusing on, uh, sorry, we're forecasting more than 77 gigawatts of new capacity to come on stream globally uh, between now and 2025, requiring the installation on average of over 1,400 turbines annually. We now have a, a raft of projects um, to be installed from now through the middle of the decade with turbines up to 14 megawatts. The main vessels used to install turbines are the wind turbine installation vessels. Uh, demand for these is driven by the number of turbines to be installed and the size of the turbines. Turbine sizes have evolved swiftly, but what does that really mean? Well, bigger turbines mean bigger swept areas by larger rotor diameters, as is seen in the IEA graphic. Larger rotor diameters require higher hubs on which heavier nasals sit to transform that wind energy to electric power. As wind turbine installation vessels are jacked up to create steady platforms for turbine installation and to reduce the crane reach requirements, turbines up to 10 megawatts generally require lift heights capability above deck of more than 90 meters uh, with a capacity of no less than 800 tons. When we look at a 12 megawatt to 14 megawatt turbine, minimum lift heights of 120 meters uh, and over 1,200 tons are required. And the next generation of vessels are designed to lift over 150 meters above deck and over 1,500 tons. So these are big vessels. To date, more than 150 vessels have been involved in installing wind turbines and their monopoles, uh, monopiles and jackets. Please note, however, that uh, this does exclude a large amount of the support vessels. Okay, Phil, well, thank you very much for that. Um, by region, where do you see the most activity for vessel new builds to support this growing business? Okay, well, the largest number of vessels deployed have been in China, uh, driven by its recent surge in offshore wind activity. Um, the relatively small average size of turbines installed and the reliance on locally available tonnage. As such, China is often uh, seen as a discrete, distinct segment. Northwest Europe has a high proportion of wind turbine installation vessels and is currently home to the majority of larger vessels, driven by the trend for larger turbines seen on the European projects. European fleet has also been deployed to projects in Taiwan, Japan and the USA. At World Energy Reports, we see the supply side for larger wind turbine installation vessel segment growing from eight vessels today to over 28 um, over the coming years. We only have two wind turbine installation vessels today uh, that can either lift turbines of at least 14 megawatts or have confirmed upgrade plans to do so. They've booked a crane um, to be installed. There are further five in construction and seven either as options with a yard or in design. Well, Europe that. remains the largest market for these vessels driven by projects that call for the installation of Siemens Gamma, GE and MHI Vestas larger turbines. Markets with strong local content preferences and who are planning projects with larger or the largest commercially available turbines like the US and Japan are seeing domestically built and owned new builds. However, and particularly for the US market, the planned domestic capacity is insufficient for the domestic project pipeline. And this either means tonnage will need to be deployed from the very active European market or will need to be new built. There is one uh, installation vessel in design in South Korea, but given the country's project pipeline and strong manufacturing base, we expect further new builds to be announced in the short term. China is also seeing larger wind turbine installation vessels, 
driven by the development of Dongfang and Minyang's 10 to 12 megawatt turbines. Chinese and Korean yards have benefited most from the new building activity, but domestic content preferences mean that yards in Japan and the USA are picking up orders. Staying on that new build thread, apart from the WTIVs, are there any other vessel new build activities that you see? Well, the wind turbine installation vessel does not always install the turbine monopile or jacket. In addition to a range of existing heavy lift harbor and or oil gas heavy lift vessels that have supported offshore wind projects today, we are seeing a range of new buildings specifically designed to transport and install the largest foundations. These vessels with cranes from four to 5,000 tons capacity and DP2 and DP3 capabilities um, include vessels such as Yan Dunul's crane vessel Les Alis, Demi Zarayan and Taiwan CW, uh, CDWE joint venture, the Green Jade vessel. In summary, the market for bigger vessels is getting bigger and more global, where we may see some short-term supply uh, tightness or project delays, but where the long-term demand is likely to be met uh, by swiftly developing supply side. Phil, as always, excellent insights. We appreciate your time. Thanks, Greg.